Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate uh, installing Oracle Rack 11G Release 2 into a base brick build. Uh, what we have here in front of us is a copy or a clone of the base build and um, no modifications yet. First thing we're going to do, add a couple of interfaces because we actually need a total of three interfaces for our Rack nodes. Okay, we're going to connect them all to the host as you can see I'm doing right here. And then we'll power the sucker up. I'm going to boot into single user mode uh, because I like to actually um, I like to have a pristine boot the very first time every uh, server boots uh, into multi-user. So we go into single user mode, make all of our changes as root, and the sysadmin should move out of the way. The very first login officially into this uh, box should be made by the Oracle DBA. Okay, so that's nice and clean, very simple. Um, and it also allows us to develop a set of instructions or a set of steps that can be automated in a kickstart script. Okay, it's because all this stuff can be done before the very first boot. All right, so we're almost booted into single user mode as you can see here. And the first thing we're going to do is modify the interface IP addresses. Okay, so as you can see, we were we really only have one interface defined in here because when we built the base brick, uh, we only had one interface. So now what I'm going to do is uh, just copy this out for two more interfaces and I'm going to edit them. Okay, so ETH0, we do not want that to be uh, DHCP. We actually need to give a static IP of 1211 and this is a slash 24. Ethernet 1 is going to use DHCP, uh, 11GR2 uh, supports using DHCP for the private interconnect. Okay, so Ethernet 0, public connect. Ethernet 1, private interconnect. And Ethernet 2 will be our management network, which we will be uh, using for actually physically accessing this node and also for connecting to iSCSI. All right, so in this case, we also want to make sure that we don't allow our we don't allow our DHCP to override our DNS settings, which I'm about to do right now. Okay, so resolve.conf name server is 1101. All right. And uh, one more thing. We have to configure the last interface. So Ethernet 2 is a static interface uh, 9911. And it is slash 16. Okay. Um, we're also going to put a few key entries into our local static hosts file. Uh, oops. Pay attention to what I'm doing. Node A1, site A, example com. Node A1, Node A2, so A, sample, um, Node A2. Okay. Give ourselves a host name, and actually, we also want a gateway of I believe we're using 121254. Okay, um, so we've just defined our host name and our gateway, and at this point uh, we want to bring up our network. Just to see that all three IP addresses come up on our interfaces. And right after doing that, we want to bring up our iSCSI client. So there it is. The iSCSI client has persistent uh, configuration information and out of the box, uh, we're not a client to anything. So we actually need to um, do some discoveries. There we are. 
And this is actually what we want to see. We want to see that uh, port 3260 TCP is listening on our, in this case, our uh, SAN A host name. And you can see we were returned um, the target names. Now, in this case, we only have one target, which is the one we configured uh, previously, along with a bunch of LUNs. Okay, and of course we want this to come back up next time we reboot into into multi-user mode. So all run levels three, four, and five, we want iSCSI on. Okay, um, what else do we need to do? Um, we need to make sure that all of the LUNs that are mapped uh, will actually be owned by Oracle. Okay, so uh, this is my rc.local. And I want to get B through M, all 12 LUNs will now be owned by Oracle every time we reboot. We actually have to put this in our rc.local because uh, every time we reboot is when we recreate those SDB through M files. So SDB, SDC, SDD, etc. Okay, so uh, they would be owned by root every time we reboot. Um, rc.local is one of the last scripts to run at reboot, so it takes care of the choning for us. Okay, and uh, one last thing we're going to do is nuke all of our NTP files. Okay, we actually want to take advantage of the new 11G release 2 feature, CTSS, Cluster Time Synchronization Service. Um, I think Oracle got tired of sysadmin screwing this up, so <laughs> instead of screwing it up ourselves, why don't we just get rid of it entirely? By not having any configuration whatsoever, when we do the installation of grid infrastructure, um, it'll detect this and it'll it'll configure CTSS for us. Okay, so we're almost done with the prep preparatory steps of our node, and uh, we'll soon be able to let go of our sysadmin hat and put on our DBA hat. So here I'm just going to shut down the node, all right, and I'm going to edit the VMX file. The VMX file is the configuration file for my virtualization platform. Okay, so in this case, VMware. So that's on my desktop under VMs node A1. And there is the file. And I want to change my public interface to connect to VNet VLAN 3. Okay. The reason for that is uh, I want to provide DHCP services that are not exposed to the rest of the network. Uh, this is my home network after all, and I am using it for other, you know, other home purposes. So, so I, I do have DHCP running, and of course I need to isolate this so I can take advantage of the um, DHCP-based scan IPs. Uh, okay, so we're done, actually. That is it. The next time we... Uh, we kick up this node, we'll be ready to install Grid Infrastructure 11G Release 2. Thank you for watching.